This is Audible. Hello, welcome to number six, the final episode in this season two of The Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. All right. You can still go and get the archive. All 18 episodes we've done so far are available on iTunes and audible.co.uk. Um, and there's a little video diary we've done, a little free podcast. We may go into free podcasting, but in video, Steve. Uh. And there's a little free taster up there. Um, so check that out. Uh, go to rickyjerase.com to find out all news and everything. But, come on, let's get on with this episode. We're, we're here and now. This is right, yeah, absolutely, here we are. Good. Carl, go. I've got some bad news to start off with straight away. Um, the world's oldest tortoise, a 250-year-old tortoise, died last week. Yeah. Did it? Yeah, in a zoo in India. 250 years old. So would, th would that have had that thing that they say about how you get a, like a flashback of, of your life? <laughs> <laughs> you mean your life flashes before your eyes? Yeah, they say, don't they? Just like on your last breath or whatever. You let, like, see you coming out of the womb and everything. Well, well, one, I don't believe that's true. I don't believe your life flashes before you. I don't know, I don't know what evidence we've got. People who die say, you know, you never guess what's happening. <laughs> No, but there's, there's loads of things that have happened where people go, oh, that's, that's weird, that's, that goes to show that we've been around before, or... No, it doesn't. There's none that, I have no evidence for that. Of well, reincarnation. I, I told you that time when it happened to me when I was younger. Go on. Your life flashed before your eyes? Well, it wasn't like a flashback, but it was close, it's the next, next thing next to flashbacks. It was, um, <laughs> I was having a bath, right, and, uh, my mum had, like, run the bath and that, and, uh, she said, is that, is that too warm? And I said something like, no, it's, it's all right, this, it's a lot better than when I used to have a, have a bath in that wooden bath in front of the fire. <laughs> okay. And she was like, what? And I said, you know, well, it happened years ago. <laughs> and she was a bit like, oh. And I, I can't remember that now, but she talks about it and, you know, that just goes to show that, because I, I was at an age when I wouldn't have known about wooden baths years ago in front of fires. No, but you talk rubbish now. So you, all you were doing, you were talking rubbish from an early age. Where's the problem? No, but you can only talk rubbish if you're aware of knowledge. <laughs> well, you... I didn't know about wooden baths, so why would I have invented that? But Carl, we've only got your mother's word on this, and she thought you might one day be a doctor. Yeah. So... She put a rock with a feather on it to keep a parrot company. <laughs> Lest we forget. Yeah, but I'm just, just saying. Well, it's all bollocks. Um, so have you researched this? You've tried to find out when little Carl Mark one and his wooden bath when he was- No, around? I don't want to go there, cause that's when you start digging out all sorts it's of- It's rubbish. Trouble, isn't it? It's rubbish. No, it's, it's not rubbish. Well, it is rubbish. What sort of stuff There's might you no discover? scientific evidence No, for... just like I've said about family trees and that, don't, don't be looking at them. Cause you go, you're only gonna find stuff you don't really want to know about. It's the same as that, innit? Leave it. Let it be. Do you know what I mean? If, if you, if your granddad was Einstein, you'd know about it cause your family would be shouting about it. If he was a bad un, you'd go, oh, keep that quiet. So right. don't look at family trees and it's the same, don't be looking back in your past lives. <laughs> There's no God past knows what lives. You've been up to. Well. Carl and the Wooden Bath. Proof. If Carl proof Bilkington uh, live on air talking shit again. <laughs> but this, this tortoise, so if that's- And also its flashbacks would just be, uh, you know, the same wall. I mean it basically spent, <laughs> I don't know how many years, in a cage. It was in the zoo, so uh, it died of liver failure. Which is a problem if you're a tortoise, because with us they can cut you open and have a look at the liver. With that, it's going, forget it, we're not getting in there. It's like you when you didn't want the plumbers to knock through the tiles to check out the piping. It's around with the tortoise. If it's a liver, we're not going through that. It's not worth it. If it's your head or your feet, we'll have a look, mate. But we're not looking at internal organs with a giant tortoise. Why not? Because, what do you mean? Well, can't, get... can't you drill into those things? It's only, it is only a shell. That is easier to replace than, than skin. Carl. I was joking. You can't do a liver operation on a tortoise. Why not? It's got all the same parts, hasn't it? All the same body parts and that. Well, I don't know that's the point. Well, not really, but, um, yeah, it's, it's but, but loosely speaking. But better ones, in a way, because they live longer. So they're doing something right, aren't right. they? If they can live 250 odd years, our, our art can't do that. Right. Which is what I say about our tortoise has got it right in a way that it's it's taking its time on everything. We're rushing about, getting stressed out. That's just you know, getting on with it. It's not rushing. 
uh, it eats healthy, doesn't it? It eats lettuce and stuff. Yeah. So that's, that's probably doing it right, but to be honest, it's too much. I wouldn't <laughs> want to live 250 years. Just eating lettuce. Let's not forget that all a tortoise does is eat lettuce. <laughs> it's not like it's jet skiing weekends and then getting its lettuce on a Monday. That's all it does is eat lettuce. Yeah. And that appeals to you, does it? Uh, no, I'm just saying that it must be doing something right, though. Of course it's doing something right. Because it's living 250 years. But all animals do something right, however long they live. Mayflies live a day, but they're doing something right. Well, they're not, are they? They haven't got a chance to learn how to do it right. And then, and then they're dead. It's, you know, that's from one extreme to another, isn't it? That just mm. seems a bit mental to me, that living a day. I wouldn't bother, so forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Could you be bothered? You don't, uh, just as you get to know someone. <laughs> yeah, another mayfly. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just saying if we had that, if that's how we lived our lives, you wouldn't have a chance to make a mark or anything, would you? It's just... It's would just, you try and pack a lot in that day? Uh, Disneyland, whatever. No, I'd prefer to make it miserable so I don't miss it, <laughs> if you know what I mean. But I was thinking the other day about, um, you know, your body and everything, because it is amazing, isn't it? How it works. Oh, yeah, yeah. Does the brain control you or are you controlling the brain? I don't know if I'm in charge of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Nor do I, There's Carl. a surprise. Nor do I, Carl. No, do, do you know what I mean, though, by that? Does well, the brain control you, or do well, you control when you, the when, brain? Well, like, don't you ever sort of think sometimes? Say if you're making... But you I are was the making, brain. No, no, but I was making a shopping list, right? Going, right, I need some, uh, rice, uh, kidney beans, uh, and I thought I had everything, and I sort of was rolling up the paper, and then, then something went, oh, an onion. Your so brain did something that. went an onion, was it yeah, Suzanne? No, well, my brain, my brain sort of went, you forgot something. Yeah. I, I didn't think I'd forgot. I no, no, you that. are your brain. No, no, but don't you understand, the brain, my brain was in, I was in control of my brain <laughs> when I was writing down rice and kidney beans. But you're not in charge of the onion, that's another part of the brain that's in charge of the onion. <laughs> the onion, the onion sector. Yeah. No, but I put the paper away. Putting my coat on, ready to go, ready then, to go and get the well, rice. Yes, but, yes, but your onion lobe kicked in. <laughs> what? So you, you put the paper in your pocket, you got the coat on, then you just suddenly hear. Then from it nowhere, was just like it was onion. Like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not even thinking about that shopping list. It's in my pocket. I'm thinking, do I need my gloves? It's cold out. Yeah. Suddenly, onion. And it was like, oh yeah, onion. Yeah, I had to get the paper out. So what I'm saying is, it was, in, the, it was in charge. The brain, the brain, the mind, the brain is the- what are you doing but who's in charge? that's just, you forgot, you forgot the onion and you remembered the onion. You must have forgotten things in the past. No, but not, not like that, not where, like, it just made me think, that was weird, who, who reminded me of that? You did! <laughs> yeah, but I'm not- <laughs> No, you are your brain. It's not like there's you, then there's a brain, then there's an extra one looking down at it, uh, oh, the, the, you know, the, the, the meta brain, the thing above it. No, but your brain, your, how does your brain work? <laughs> you give it information, don't you? Well, it takes- Do you mean you give it information? Well, it's if doing I, it, if I it? sat in a room with nothing, not feeding it anything, he wouldn't know anything. No, but it, it, it's this thing well, that there's two yous, it's this thing that there's- There's, there's Carl this... and Carl's brain. Yeah, there's, there's not- there's not a duality in this. If you- if, if you go- if you go, come on, come on, now think. That's the brain saying that to itself. It's- it, it's not- there's not two people in there having an argument coming, come on, brain. And the brain's going, oh, don't you start, I was thinking then. And the other thing's going, brain, onion. And the brain goes, Carl, onion. You are your brain. If you are anything, you are you are your mind, your brain, your collection of memories, your personality. You're not what you look like. Does that answer your question, Carl? Uh, what do you think of then? You were thinking of a tortoise on a skateboard then when I did that last <laughs> sentence, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I like you, Rick. I'm always uh, annoyed and embarrassed when we have to concede something to Carl. And it seems though each week I look on the emails that we've got and once again someone has found some evidence to support some of the nonsense that Carl has come yeah. out with. Now okay. you remember we were talking about his concept of putting a giant mirror on the moon because we, why should we have to go into space? Then we could just look up at the moon and right. we'd see the earth reflected back at us and we'd think, ah, that's the earth. Isn't I great? can't see myself backing down on how ludicrous this is. No, indeed. Although 
um, someone, I think they're really being very picky. They were picking you up on a technical point because I think one of your, um, criticisms was the idea that the, uh, the moon is moving and thus the mirror would, you know, be absent from view for some time. Uh, although people have been claiming that the, the, the moon, uh, we, there's always the same face of the moon that's, that's shown to us. There's always the same side of the moon is always visible to Earth. That's when they talk about the dark side of the moon. It's not but, but, just but, light. It's the fact that we can't see. It's the other no, side of the moon. but we move, so it's not always present to... Well, no, but it would, it would, it would always be present to someone on Earth. Yes, I know. Well, th this is the thing. These people don't know what I know. I know that Carl is thinking of looking up there and seeing himself <laughs> looking back. That's what he's hoping. Like when you're going, going along in a car and you see a, a shiny building, you go, oh, that's my car. <laughs> yeah, and you wait. Yeah. That's what he's hoping to see. <laughs> he's not doing it to gauge the speed of light and think and change like that. He's not doing that. He wants to look up through a telescope and wave. Yeah. That's, that's what they don't realise. I know what he's thinking. Do you want to respond, Carl? He's got, uh, the problem with the moon is... <laughs> Here's a statement. The problem with the moon is dot yeah. dot dot. Yeah. The problem with the earth is there's too much water. Yeah. No, the moon... It's been, been around ages, hasn't it? Yeah. But it's got no history. It's got nothing to show for it. <laughs> it's a load of old rocks and stuff. Yeah. And for me, history is created by stuff happening on it. So really, the moon, even though it's old, in a way it's new. Because it's untouched and that. But uh, we're not go we don't go to the moon to visit museums <laughs> <laughs> or arcades. No, but, but say, say, say like Henry, Henry, Henry the Eighth, right? Uh, you watch Antiques Roadshow or whatever, and some woman goes, oh, this plate you've got, this was uh, Henry the Eighth's. Uh, and y as you can see, you can see the knife marks on it. Uh, oh, look, there's some chicken on it, right? And you go, oh, God, yeah, that's amazing. Then someone goes in and goes, Here's a plate of Henry VIII, but it hasn't been used, it's still in the box. You'd go, well, it's not as good, that. <laughs> no, it's got no, no history. No, because very often on the Antiques Roadshow, they have Henry VIII's plate with a bit of chicken on it. <laughs> they kept that. Don't throw that away. Why? Arthur Negus are like that in a few hundred years' time. No, but do you understand what I'm saying? Things are only good if stuff's happened on it. The moon, you're up there, you're having a look, you're going, no one else has even been here. If but you go to the moon for research purposes, for well, scientific there, research. Steve, this what is do you what mean I'm there's saying. nothing there? They're examining the soil and the environment soil, yeah. and the air. Uh, it's, it's, it's just a long well, way to go. Well, they're not doing that. They're just not doing that. Well, well, they're not, are they? Because last time they went, oh, they were playing golf or something. There's golf balls up there that they've been whacking about. What sort of research is that? That's what I'm saying. There's nothing up there. So wh why why else would you go all that way and go? Oh, nothing. Here. Fancy a knockabout? <laughs> <laughs> Why are they knocking golf balls about if, if there's really important stuff to look at? You don't see people in museums going, fancy having a knock, uh, knock some golf balls about? No, I'm looking at this vase. Oh, right, that's interesting. But on the moon, nothing. Nothing to look at. What other games have you brought? That's what I mean. <laughs> Carl, have you ever seen the program Inside the Actors Studio? Uh, no. James Lipton interviews famous actors and gets world, uh, words of advice about, uh, you know, how they work and how they act. But at the end, he always asks a series of questions, which is based on a French series of questions that a guy called Bruno Pivot used to, uh, to give people when he interviewed them. So I'm going to ask you some of these questions. Many people will be familiar with them. Just interesting to see what your response is. And, you know, answer them quickly. You don't have to think about them too much. Mm. What is your favourite word? Uh, I don't think I've got a favourite, because you only use them when you need to, don't you? I don't just go about saying the same word. So, uh Well, alright. Yeah, it's not my favourite, it's just that it does the job. It's, it does the, the necessary job for that time, doesn't it? <laughs> it's like, how are you? I'm alright. It's a greeting. What about, um, I think serendipity was voted England's favourite word. Never used it. No. Stupid word. Who decided that? I don't know, it was a poll, but I was suggesting things. I'm, I can't believe people coming up going, um, favourite word, mm, so <laughs> Thanks for asking. So, yeah, but, yeah. but the thing is, say if it meant, oh, I'm fed up, would it still be the best word? Is it based on how it sounds and how it's put together or what it means? Bit I think both. everything. But then loads of words are being left out on, you know, which are probably brilliant words and they're not getting a look in. Such as? Uh, well, like that one, fed up. I'm fed up. It two, sums two it up, words, doesn't it? Well, two, two you know, 
uh, it just sums it up. When someone goes, how are you? You go, I'm fed up, me. Sick of it. It's another good one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we get to it. Come on, tell to, to your other favourite throw. I've had enough. It's just all stuff. These like aren't <laughs> words. They're <laughs> phrases. They're yeah. all negative. They're yeah. all whinging. These aren't exactly. These aren't words. What's your favourite thing? My favourite thing to do is moan. Yeah, that would be the favorite. Well, it's not one word. It's loads of words. Fed up. Sick of it. Ah, oh, enough. Ah, oh, <laughs> jeez. Whinge should be your favourite word. Yeah. Whinge is a good word. I like NGEs. Mm. Lozenge, <laughs> whinge, flange. Yeah. What is your least favourite word? Uh, it might be serendipity. <laughs> that would be up there for me. I tell you what, that would be up there for me. Uh, probably that like on? French words that have made it into the English thing. Blamange. Just, just. There's a munch. There's an unge there. <laughs> yeah. So you know. How would you dislike it? How would you dislike a blamange? <laughs> but just, just you know, as if we haven't got enough words in our books. Go on. Because I was thinking about. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Alf alphabet, right? Why have we got that many? When other countries get by, without that many letters in it, we got more words than any other yeah, language as well. Yeah, but that's because we got more wet more letters. Well, I don't know. So that. we've we've created a headache. I reckon you could at least half it. Well, you probably could half it. Well, you only use about half a dozen of them. No, but stuff like an X, you look at words that have got X in, and they're always words that you go, "What does that mean? How's someone come up with that?" <laughs> <laughs> That's how it comes across to me, and it, there's loads of big words, it's like dinosaur names. It's like, well look, nobody was about when they were knocking about, so let's, make up, some, at least. let's make up some names for them using the letters that hardly get used. They've all got Y's and X's in them. <laughs> yeah, they have, yeah! That's what I'm saying, it's like, well, let's use it for that. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you, you just, it's not so much what is your least favourite word, you just don't really like just, most just, of the just words. Say, just cut them. down the words, stop adding, stop adding new words. I get by, I don't know how many words there are in the world, but I reckon I hardly use any of them. Well, I'll tell you what, this year's word must be podcast. Yeah, but That'll it's- That'll be in the dictionary and, uh- But it's made up, innit? It wasn't here before, it's just another one. This is what I'm saying about- But what else would you call this? You know, just there broadcast. is a new concept called podcasting. There yeah. is a podcast. But it's also a broadcast. We had a word for it. It's still a broadcast. Yeah, but they go, oh, you're a broadcaster. Oh, what, what radio station? No, I don't work on a radio station. I, um, I, um, I do a radio show, but I don't understand. Well, I do a radio show and I upload it on, I don't understand. It's called a podcast! Done! Here's another idea. Go Add on. a new one, get rid of an old one. Last one in, first one out, or whatever. Do it that way. That's a good way. What would you get rid of then? So, we've brought in podcast this year, but what, but what uh, word would you lose? Well, uh, what's the name? Those birds that died out. Dodos. Get rid of it. <laughs> if the bird's gone, the word can, surely. <laughs> it's, uh, it's almost profound. Oh, it's amazing. It's great. Oh, God. What turns you on, creatively, spiritually, or emotionally? Uh, learning. That's a nice answer. Yeah. Learning. Excellent. Learning Will stuff. you say that? Yeah, but I, 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 everything you teach me, I take it in. It's just that sometimes I go, I don't, I don't get it. But that still counts as far as I'm concerned. Well, no, it doesn't. Learning is uh, knowledge is uh, th there must be some sort of retention. You can't say I've got a great memory for a second. <laughs> you can't say that. You, it has to stay there, and then then knowledge has to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, applied. You can't just have all this knowledge that isn't applicable because it's useless. I mean, trivia is useless to a large extent. It's not real knowledge because it, it doesn't really help you in it, it, it practically. No, but there's a lot of that going on. You're always reading stuff that you go, I've just read that. It's got me thinking for a minute. It's not going to help me in any way, but it gets a reaction, doesn't it? Well, that's good, yeah. That's, 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 what, yeah, that's, that's, that's what, what art I mean. does. And yeah, sometimes education's good for its sake if it really does inflame. But, but then sometimes, like I've said before, you can know too much where it gets you down. Go on. Uh, I just was reading something about an octopus. That's that's like a killer octopus, and yeah. it annoyed me that this was knocking about now because <laughs> I didn't know. I thought they were quite friendly. <laughs> you, whenever you see them in cartoons and that, they're always happy, aren't they? And then suddenly, like they've, they've sort of brought the whole sort of uh, creature down. Do you know what I mean? No. What do you mean? Well, just just 
you know, when when you see them in films, they're, they're running about and that, and everybody likes an octopus. <laughs> but this one, that's on the- it was- it was your fault, really, because you told me about that frog that's going about killing people. No, I didn't say that. Uh, so I looked it up on the internet at, like, other creatures and stuff. Dot and com. there's, uh, yeah. there's, uh, some octopus that's in the sea. Yeah. Uh, and what it does, y you don't even have to, like, threaten it. It just spits in the water. And if that stuff gets on you, does you in. Again, I'm, I, mm. So in a way it's good knowledge because, I mean, I don't go in the sea anyway because it's full of stuff like that, but that's <laughs> just reassured me that I'm doing the right thing. If they're knocking about, just gauzing everywhere, <laughs> uh, you don't even have to be near one, you don't even know if it's been spitting and stuff, it can kill you. It just seems unfair. I haven't harmed it, I haven't gone near it, why is it getting annoyed with me? It doesn't seem right. So that's where a knowledge has, has not helped that octopus out. Because now, when you eat them, I just think, yeah, have another one. Do you know what I mean? Get rid of them. <laughs> another conversation with himself. Another conversation with himself. What is your favourite curse word? Um. I don't- I don't think I, I do anything like that, I just- I think people can tell by my face when I'm, like, fed up. Uh, well, they know you're fed up because you're always whinging. Uh, I don't think I've got one. Uh, knobhead. <laughs> that sums everything up and I think it's- But you wouldn't call your nan a knobhead, would you? What would you call a nan? Uh. But she doesn't do anything to annoy me that much. But if she did, what would you say? If she really annoyed well, you? Well, knobhead's all right, isn't it? Because she 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 sort of gets it. It's one of them things that everybody understands, but it's not too offensive. Right. What a knobhead. All right, you're getting into this, aren't you? It's, so that sums it up. But I don't I don't really. Do you need one of them? What's that doing for you? It's better to think, isn't it? Like, okay, I've just slagged off that octopus, but at no point was a, a effing and jeffing about it. <laughs> To, you, you know how annoyed I am with it. I don't have to start swearing about it, and th that's that's. What would you do though if you were swimming, right? It was a nice little thing. You're on holiday, right? And there's this octopus there, and you're going around, right? And, it, and you see it start spitting at you, poison. What yeah, would you say? Well, to it? well, it's too late then, isn't it? And I'd kick it, <laughs> and I'd say, you "Nobed." I, I would, uh, but what's the point? What's the point in getting annoyed now? Because it's done its, it's done its stuff, hasn't it? <laughs> and then you kick it and call it a knobhead <laughs> under the water. What is this octopus thinking? Oh, God. Oh, okay, you fucking eight-legged shit. I'm you, not bothered. I'm not bothered. I don't know what you're you saying. fucking, fucking cunt yeah. of a mollusk. I'm gonna just spit at you again. It's not bothered. You slimy little fucking boneless wanker. This is why the face Are you is still good. talking to the octopus? <laughs> That's downloadable as a ringtone, and it's also the jingle for Carl's Diary, just reading excerpts of Carl's Diary. Went home and looked up Freud on the internet, didn't find him that interesting, so looked at some other philosophers instead. Socrates, Aristotle, why have you just listed some philosophers? Just to show that I'm learning. Well, that's not learning. That's just that's, learning their names. That's a list. You might as well write one to a hundred. <laughs> yeah, but if someone says, oh, what's your favourite philosopher? I'll go, hang on a minute, and I've got them written down. But what, uh, why have you <laughs> got Wait a minute, one? I'll go home, get my enormous diary out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get a wheelbarrow, bring in my workings, <laughs> and say one of the la names I've written down. And when they say, well, why do you like him? Yeah, why do you, you like, just why, run away? Well, I, I noticed you put, um, Socrates first. Why is he your favourite philosopher? You throw the diary at them and leg it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and then you go on to say, it's weird how names have changed, but then there's no other point there. <laughs> just is, isn't it? When you think about, like, Socrates, I've never heard that on anyone who I know, <laughs> is what I mean. It's just, in a way... But you're not Greek, are you? But how did that go about back then? I mean, it, when, say if you were phoning someone up and he said, uh, I'm booking a table for two, they go, name, Socrates, did he ever go, cheers, without going, can you spell that for me? 
But I don't know what else point you're making. <laughs> I'm just saying it's, it's a name that's awkward. You're always gonna have to go, can you spell that for me? You go, and it's not just him. Look at all the other names that are on that list. But they're <laughs> from a different country. And a different era. Yeah, I know, but the names, I've been to Rome and stuff and you sort of go- Well, ancient Rome. Just, just Rome. <laughs> it hasn't changed, has it? Rome, so it can be ancient Rome or Rome in 2006. It's yeah. the same buildings. Oh, I used to love Nero going around in his Fiat Punto. <laughs> Lao Tzu from years ago came up with some good stuff. One, he know he who knows does not speak. He who speaks does not know. Not entirely true. To lead people, walk behind them. Yeah. And of course, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. Oh, yeah. yeah, did that. Uh, his favourites. Maybe maybe this is why people are at the start line spectating at the Commonwealth Games. Well, I, no, it's just that I, I've never understood why in Olympics and stuff like that. If you're gonna watch, don't stand around the start line. Go to the end, where you see the winner. But because of that saying, it actually makes sense, doesn't it? It's like, well, every step starts with a step or whatever. Say uh, it again? Uh, every race, you know, you've got to start with a, with, with a step. Yeah. So, um, uh... Which is, to, uh, am I talking to now, you or your brain? Well, I was thinking about it a bit, so I think I was in control of it a bit more. So, and what have you come up with? Just, just, if you want to stay at the start line, do. <laughs> what does that mean? I'm just saying, if, if you're into ra- I'm not, I wouldn't watch a race, right? Okay, but is this you or your brain I'm talking to now? This is me. Okay. I wouldn't watch- Are you using, are you gonna, are you, are you gonna bring the brain into it, or is it, there's no- I don't just... know, let's just see what happens. <laughs> okay. But all I'm saying is- Right. If I was to watch a race- Yeah. I wouldn't hang about the start line, because- well, I, you just said you would. What, did I? Yeah, you said that's the place to start, because every, every race starts with a step. <laughs> no, but I wouldn't normally. <laughs> right, I okay. wouldn't watch any race. My brain definitely hasn't been used yet. No, is this you or your brain you're talking about now? It would... I'm just saying about me, if I was on holiday- Yeah. And Suzanne said there's a race going on down the road- Yeah. I'd go, well, let's go, keep going down the road and stand at the finish line. Okay, but, but now what have you thought? Lazoo, yeah. I'd say, well, hang on a minute, every s- race starts with a single step. Yeah. How many people around the start line? Is there more room there? She goes, yeah, I'll go, let's go there then, it's less busy. Right, and what would you see there then? I'd see people starting the race, but I wouldn't be that impressed with them, because I'd go, well, I don't know if any of these are any good. So would you start at the start or the end then? <laughs> I'd, I, if it was down to me, I, I'd just probably stay at the finish line. Okay, so you wouldn't want to see the first step then? So what do you think of Lazoo now then? Uh, it's not what- but I wrote down three of his, that one isn't my favourite, that was the third. I preferred the leading people from behind. Okay, and what would you do to lead someone now then? Um, well if you're behind, you don't have to take responsibility, do you? You can go, well, well I didn't send you away, you went there. That's not really leading them, though, is it? Yeah, because I've made them think. I've gone, uh, they go, oh, I've just walked into a big hole. <laughs> I'd go, oh, should have been looking where you're going. <laughs> I haven't led them in that hole. But they've learnt a lesson, they won't go in a hole again. <laughs> that was one of the greatest conversations I've ever been a part of! I mean, that was incredible! <laughs> Never mind Aristotle and Socrates! That was incredible, that! Um, if someone's out there, could they make a transcript of that? Because I think that, you know, in a thousand years' time, that'd be amazing. That was incredible, Carl. And not once was the brain used. <laughs> the jingle there for Rockbusters, the, um, one of the most hated quizzes in the history of mankind. Joking, aren't you? The people loathe it. No, uh, they're loving it. Well, well, it's the last one anyway, so just get over, just do yeah. the answers. Hold on, we can't do another one though, because we can't give the answers out, so this just... Yeah, this is the last one, it's just the answers for last week for people who are doing it. Okay, right. well, small mercies. Um, the first one that I gave you last week was, the initials were CK, right? Yeah. Uh, the clue was, uh... Do you know the songs that you sing at Christmas? Yeah. That bloke over there is the best at singing them. So what's what what the songs you do? Carol King. Carol King, right. yeah. Well that done. works. Yeah. That works. Fair right. well done. Uh the second one, MG. I told the homosexual man that the grape tree was mine. Right? MG. Gay. Yeah. Marvin Gaye, obviously, Marvin, but, yeah. but how do you get That's to Marvin? What's it? That's my what? my vine, isn't it? That 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 I told you. My, my vine gay? Yeah. My vine. Yeah. And the last one. <laughs> my vine guy. That's shocking. It's, it's, well, the last one, it was. Shit. The last one, the initial was S. 
Um, I said, uh, I asked you oh. if you believe in Father Christmas, what would you say? What's, what's the name for Father Christmas? Santa Claus. Right, so if, if I said to you, do you believe in Father Christmas, you'd sort of go... No. Yeah, but, yeah, but what, what's his name again? Santa. Right, so what would you do? You'd go, oh, Santa. No, I don't... I don't That's I... it, that's what you do there. You go, Santa, nah. Santa, nah. Santana. So that was, that was the last one. Well done to <laughs> Bob in Yorkshire. Got all three of them right. You'll get a little sign picture. <laughs> oh, well, that's it. That's the end of season two of Ricky Gervais Show. Uh, we're back soon. Check out rickygervais.com for information and upcoming news. There's a free video cast we're doing. Um, uh, we're also um, bringing out a book of the podcast. Uh, yeah, that'll have a lot of the um, the best conversations we've had with Carl, and I think there have been some of them in this show. And uh, Carl has illustrated all his points and his memories to, to, I mean, that he thinks that's proof, Victorian evidence. So, I mean, it is the ramblings of a, a maniac, but you can pre-order that on um, Amazon. Um, uh, well, thanks very much. Uh, it's goodbye from me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Bye. And Carl Pilkington. Audible hopes you've enjoyed this program.